According to the Forbes Human Resources Council, the top two in-demand skills for employers are analytic ability and data science. It's claimed that every job is a data job these days. However, the fast-changing world today requires us to constantly adapt and develop new skills. What was crucial yesterday might be no longer important or sufficient tomorrow and the years to come. Hi there, just a quick hello and welcome back. Today I want to share with you the top 5 skills you need to master for a career in data analytics in 2022. I recently read a tweet from the World Economics Forum that says, this is a decade where the soft stuff is the hard stuff, which is about how important soft skills are, especially in the world of work today. So I'll start off with the first skill, which is the soft skill, critical thinking. Critical thinking is a manner of thinking that employs curiosity, creativity, skepticism, analysis, and logic. So what does it mean to apply critical thinking to data analysis? Critical thinking is very closely related to asking questions, whether to yourself or to others. The following skills that I'm going to talk about next is the hard skills. When I scraped the data analyst job posting a few months ago, this is what I saw. Among almost 2,000 data analyst job posts, most of them require SQL and Excel skill followed by Tableau, Python, and R skills. I actually think the order doesn't actually mean that much because if we move a little bit into the data scientist direction, Python, R, and SQL are definitely the most in-demand skills. There are many levels of SQL that allow you to perform from the most simple queries to the most advanced things. For example, on the basic level, you're doing the easiest operations like select, order by and where. On the intermediate level, you want to be able to do the nested queries like group by in a select query, aggregate functions to summarize data, working with subqueries, working with date time data type, and applying regular expressions to manipulate string data. On the advanced level, you'll be doing stuff like correlated subqueries, window functions, understand different types of data joins, and optimize the performance of your queries. Since SQL is very quick and easy to learn and it's so widely used, I encourage you to learn up to the advanced level. Among the many free and open source resources for learning SQL, I'd recommend Select Star SQL, which is an interactive book for learning SQL. And for those of you who also want to learn MySQL and other query languages, I'd recommend BIP.io. The next skill I'd highly recommend you to go an extra mile to master is Excel. Even though more and more companies are moving to the enterprise resource planning software solutions to manage the data, still 60% of companies are using Excel. Excel is slow and tedious, but from my experience, many small tasks will still be done in Excel, especially when you're working in a team with many colleagues who are not super data savvy. So be sure you're on top of the game by mastering the advanced functionalities such as VLOOKUP, XLOOKUP, INDEX MATCH, advanced conditional formatting, macros, and VBA to automate repetitive tasks and data simulation. Also, if you've never heard about Power Query in Excel, check it out. It opens up a lot of convenient features for data management in Excel. With the curriculum that I just provide to you, you could learn things for free on YouTube just by searching for those keywords. But if you want to have a more structured way of learning, I'd recommend the Excel skills for business specialization on Coursera. The next hard skill I'm going to talk about is the statistical programming skill. It consists of two parts, statistics and programming. If you're not sure what's the minimum statistical knowledge you need to know as a data analyst, please check out this video where I'll walk you through the most important concepts you need to know. For the programming skills, as we've seen, R and Python are by far the most popular languages. I think the best course for learning R is the R programming programming course from Johns Hopkins University. The course provides interactive coding lessons, which is very useful, and the material makes you dive deep into R and serves as a strong basis for data analysis and data science later on. You learn many foundational concepts such as data types, functions, lexical scoping, and debugging tools. Even if you already have some experience with R, I strongly believe that there will be still some things for you to pick up in this class. As for learning Python, the best online course I've found so far is the Python for Everybody specialization on Coursera. It consists of five courses that cover pretty much all the foundation you need to do data analysis in Python. And they also offer lessons in information retrieval in Python and how to connect Python with databases, 
which are usually not covered in other online Python courses. If you want to go more in depth into how to use Python for specific purposes, check out those two free courses from Harvard University. The first one is Introduction to Artificial Intelligence with Python, and the second one is Using Python for Research. The final hard skill that I think would benefit you tremendously in your data analytics career is the data visualization and dashboarding skill. Essentially, there are four main types of data visualization. The first one is comparison. Think of bar chart and color plate map. The second type is distribution. Think of histogram and scatter plot. And the third type is composition with the famous examples like pie chart and tree maps. And the final type is evolution over time, which is often represented by the line chart and bar charts. If you find yourself running out of ideas for your data visualization, the website datavisproject.com is a very good place to browse through all kinds of possible data visualizations you could create. To create visualization dashboards and data reporting, Tableau and Power BI are definitely the most popular software. But for data analysis purposes, you should also know how to use R and Python visualization libraries such as ggplot, matplotlib, Seaborn and Plotly. The course Data Visualization and Dashboarding with R on Coursera is a very good start to learn data vis in R. Suppose you already have all these skills already, but the $1 million question is how should you show it on your CV or LinkedIn profile? As a rule of thumb, it's always good to have a clear layout for your resume and a separate section for skills. For the skills section of your resume, the worst thing to do would be to make a long list of all the generic skills like this. A better way to do this is to be specific and group your skills by skill type. You can even list the years of experience you have with each tool. For programming languages you include, be sure to mention the libraries and frameworks you use for data visualization and manipulation in that programming language. But listing out all these skills is not enough. You also need to be able to demonstrate that you have applied these skills to your project. The general formula for mentioning working experience is what you did plus using specific tools and skills plus quantitative impact of your project, if possible. For example, I described one of my projects in my previous working experience like this. Performed association analysis and customer segmentation on the use of care data in 99 Amsterdam postal code neighborhoods using R. Bracket a priori library. Looking at this example, you can see that I tried to be specific about what kind of analysis I did using what kind of data and what kind of tools and packages that I used. So now you already know what skills you're going to develop in 2022. I'll see you next in this video where I talk about the free resources and cheat sheets to level up your SQL and Python skills. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.